Hello, brethren. How you doing? Uh, very quickly, uh, before we begin uh, this quick little video, uh, brethren, sisters, body of Christ, Church of the Living God, please do keep our brother Jeffrey Jones, 16 King James Bible Believer, 11 is his channel. He is a resource channel. He puts out excellent stuff uh, for the body of Christ. Our brother Jeff Jones has uh, injured his knee and he's unable to work at the moment. So if you all could uh, keep him in prayer, please. And also very quickly, on to the one brother who I believe um, is uh, one of our brethren um, who is fluent in Espanol, Spanish. Yes. Yes, I do, brother. Yes. So, please send me the stuff. Yes. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Please. You know who you are. <clears throat> anyway, I am going to be sharing something with you that was given to me by our brother from Australia. This is a little on the dated side, but because of stuff that's been going on, I, I'm just now being able to get to it. Uh, so this is about what's going on in Australia. But with today here in America, you have Jesuit Fauci now saying that the ha uh ha -huh is not enough, that they got to have visors now, spit shields on their face. When I was working at Papa Murphy's, I remember a guy came in with a ha and also a spit guard on his face, a spit shield. It's like, oh, really? Really? But I want to read this article that was sent to me. I, I'm using my fancy schmancy cell phone because I don't know how to do the split screen thing. And I'm going to be putting the link for this article in the description box. Along with another video that uh, our brother Jeffrey Allen uh, shared with another brother, but uh, he also shared it with me, and it's very, very telling. I'm, I'm going to put a lot of links to certain things about, um, about this in the description box. And I'm also going to put the link for this article in the description box so you can read it yourself. This is from The Age, it's called The Age, from Microsoft News. <laughs> Unions call for police, ADF, to enforce mask rules in stores. And this was from the 7th, 21, 2020. Um, so I said, it's a little dated, but... Australia's largest union representing retail employees has called on the Victorian government to bring in troops from the Australian Defence Force to help enforce the wearing of masks in stores. However, government authorities have said it will be the responsibility of retailers to administer the new laws a move which may draw the ire of unions and employers. The shop, distributive, distributive, distributive and Allied Employees Association, SDA, <laughs> that's interesting, has said it should not be incumbent on retail employees to enforce the law and bar non-mask wearing customers from entry, saying it could expose them to potential abuse or violence. And I have heard of things like that. Like, um, I remember there was a, something about a 7-Eleven store down south here in America where someone wouldn't sell something to somebody because they didn't have a mask and they... <laughs> spit on the counter and then got like drug out or something like that <clears throat> but um yeah 
people are so conditioned now to the mask that it is possible to see people getting a little violent about it, being told that they got to have on a her mask. And here in America, uh, Jesuit Fauci now pushing the face shields. It's getting pretty stupid around here and all over the world, of course. But they said that instead of the employees and the companies enforcing it themselves, they want to bring in the police. Martial law here in America. See, the lost world is being conditioned to want the Antichrist system, to want the mark of the beast, to want to have an open military dictatorship ruling and running their lives. That's what they want. They're getting there <coughs> more and more every day. Let's continue this. This is a very fascinating article. <coughs> Continuing. A sudden surge in the number of coronavirus COVID-19 cases has been reported from Australian cities of Melbourne and Sydney. In a bid to control the outbreak, authorities announced on July 7th that Melbourne and Mitchell Shire in the state of Victoria will return to Stage 3 stay-at-home restrictions for six weeks. From 11.59 p.m. on July 8th, wearing a face mask has been made compulsory in Melbourne and Mitchell Shire starting starting 11.59 p.m. on July 22nd. Get this. A $200 fine will be charged from those who fail to do so. Now, here in America, not to my knowledge, not to my knowledge, if any of you know of any, please put it in the um, comment section. To my knowledge, I do not know of anybody here in America being fined um, but with all the propaganda and fear-mongering by the Jesuits and their Jesuit-controlled media, fines and maybe even imprisonment could be coming for those who don't think about the common good and where the ha <laughs> ha and the spit <laughs> This is so stupid. So stupid. <clears throat> but like I said, if any of you know here in my nation of America, of any incidences, please share them in the comment section, okay? Continuing, several new cases have been reported from Sydney, the capital of New South Wales, NSW. Most of the cases were from a cluster linked to a hotel, leading to the reintroduction of stricter social distancing norms. Very quickly on that, they have something that they're working on calling called contact tracing, which has something to do with the cell phones and the 5G towers and stuff like that. And they tell you that the six foot social distancing thing helps slow the spread of the, <laughs> the, the virus. <laughs> uh, and scientifically, you can prove it is there's all kinds of evidence out there that, for example, the human sneeze, excuse me, human is not a Bible word. Excuse me. I'm working on trying to get my speech right with the scriptures here, so beg your pardon. It is, there is scientific evidence that proves that the sneeze from man um, is capable of going at least 30 feet, you know, it can go at least 30 feet. The six foot dis, uh, social distancing thing has something to do with the, what they call the con, tra, uh, contact tracing, where they won't be able to um, get a good reading on you positionally unless you're six feet apart. You can look that up on your own time to document that and to verify that. Go ahead, go find it. Okay, let's continue. 
Meanwhile, for the first time in a hundred years, the border between Victoria and NSW, two of the nation's most populous states, has been closed to curb the outbreak. So they're shutting their borders here in Australia, in this uh, part of Australia. Both sick and healthy people are being confined in one area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's continue. Here's a look at the ongoing situation in pictures. Pictured, there's a bunch of pictures, which you'll see when you go to the link. Pictured, a member of the Muslim community records his details on arrival at the Aub Auburn Gallipoli Mosque in Sydney for Eid al Adha Adha prayers on July 31st. New South Wales granted an exemption for 400 people to gather at the mosque to celebrate Eid. E -I -D. So they made an exception for the sons of Ishmael, or those who are ascribed to the religion of Ishmael, to all gather together. But here in America, church buildings are closed because they're government 501c3 corporations, and the government said shut down, and they have. And if they open, they all have to have ha <laughs> ha and do social distancing within the church buildings. <laughs> Why anyone would defend church buildings? Chapter and verse in the New Testament, the Pauline epistles, where the Lord commands us to build buildings and call them churches. Show me in the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. Show me, please. Thank you. Let's continue. SDA National Security Gerard Dwyer said shopping centers have the potential to attract significant numbers of people, well, no, duh, which could enhance the risk of spreading COVID-19 if laws are not enforced. The video that I'm going to link um, that Brother Jeff Allen shared with another brother, um, you need to watch that video, or at least listen to it. <laughs> yeah. This coronavirus, the poison crown, corona gonna get you, is far less dangerous than the common flu. But yet the propaganda is telling you it's the most deadliest thing on the face of God's earth, or flat earth, whatever you prefer. We're not going to get into that argument, okay? Love you. Let's continue. Quote, if a government announces that masks are mandatory, the police should enforce the law. To do otherwise puts the health and safety of retail workers and shoppers at risk, as well as sending a mixed message to the community. community. End quote, he said. For the common good. For the common good, which is a Catholic doctrine. You, not not for your sake, no, but for your other for other people's sake. When here in the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures, the only ones that are isolated and made to wear a covering on their upper lip are those who are sick. Leviticus chapter thirteen. Read that on your own time, please. Okay. According to the scriptures, healthy people do not be isolated. Healthy people do not wear That's nonsense. Hence, healthy people being forced to wear and conform to the Jesuit maxims here is contrary to the scriptures. Totally contrary to the scriptures. Oh, 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 some of you might be saying, what? Romans 13 and uh, 1 Peter chapter 2? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Wait for it, okay? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <clears throat> Continuing. 
Quote, Retail workers should not be required to enforce the law. That is the job of the police. So apparently these retail workers here in this division of Australia want, want a police state for the common good to force people to enforce wearing a face mask. And brethren, you my American countrymen, well, you don't think this is going to happen here, huh? Beg your pardon. The second wave is coming. Okay? When you have Sosa, the black pope, the most powerful man on this earth, the most dangerous man on this earth, telling us about the second wave, there is going to be a second wave in this nation. Absolutely. Now, a second wave of the uh, man-made biological weapon coronavirus? Don't know. But the second wave as far as the propaganda and the control tactics given to us here by the Jesuits, that's definitely coming. More stricter enforcements, more stay-at-home stuff. You watch. You watch, you my American countrymen, you watch. You watch. That's coming. That's coming. One of the videos that I plan on doing here in the near future is uh, a video detailing how our constitutional rights today, because of the Trading with the Enemy Act and because of the executive powers uh, or the executive order given by um, Roosevelt, I believe it was, uh, our Constitution is more like a guideline, more than an actual um, doctrine to be enforced. It's a guideline that could be easily circumvented today for the common good, because we're under military dictatorship or military jurisdiction here in our country in America. <clears throat> What this, what's happening in Australia, brethren, and all of you of other nations, this is coming. This is coming. So your nation too. Let's continue. The union has asked the state government to ensure police are present in locations such as shopping centers to crack down on unmasked shoppers. And if not enough police are available to do so, to call the Australian Defense Force to help. Now you are my American countrymen, come on. We have the Black Lives Matter um, thing, funded by Soros, the Masons, pretty much. Funded by the Masons. Okay, and when the second wave of propaganda and fear comes on our nation, they are going to, I, you watch, they're going to make it a mandatory thing in America that you have to wear a mask. I bet you that. I bet you 10 bucks. And then when the police can't enforce it, you know, totally, military jurisdiction, martial law, which um, which the riots were um, the beginning stages to bring it in. Yeah. Yeah. And for you, my American countrymen, has anything gotten better since? Or has it gotten worse with every passing day? You figure that one out yourself. Let's continue. <clears throat> fellow retail union, fellow retail union, the retail and fast food workers union, RAFFWU, made similar calls on Tuesday saying, 
Retail employees should leave it up to police or management to handle the issue of wearing of masks in the store. Quote, that responsibility falls fairly and squarely on the employer, not the staff. It is said, security and police should be provided, if need be, to make sure the safety of workers is protected. However, the Age and the Sydney Morning Herald understand that it will be up to workplaces to enforce the policy, with, direction, with directions to alert authorities if people do not comply. And that's coming to America. Oh, don't, don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. That's coming to America. On Monday, a number of major Melbourne retailers, including Bunnings, David Jones, and Kmart, hey, y'all got Kmart over there still, said they would ban entry for any customers not wearing a mask. However, major supermarket Woolworths confirmed the business would not refuse service to non-mask wearers because there was a range of personal circumstances where masks aren't recommended. Coles said it would await further clarification from the government. Security guards at major shopping centers, which are still able to trade under stage three restrictions, will, will remind customers to wear masks. If any customer refuses, the centers will call police. Well, that's coming here, brethren, my American countrymen. That's coming here. Australia's major retail organizations, the Australian Retailers Association, ARA, and the National Retail Association, NRA, <laughs> have both recommended retail retailers refuse entry to non-mask wearers and to call the police if disagreements flare. Quote, If situations escalate, we remind all retailers to contact their local police as enforcement of these rules of the... Uh, if situations escalate, <coughs> we remind all retailers to contact your local police as enforcement of these rules is not the responsibility of your staff. End quote, the NRA said. And that's not the National Rifle Association, you my American countrymen. <laughs> Victorian police, Victoria Police and the Department of Health did not respond to questions prior to the publication. And that is the end of the article. And like I said, I'm going to be linking that in the description box of this video, along with several other things I'm going to link in this. But, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Government telling you to wear <laughs> and to abide by these things uh, against a virus that is, is less harmful than the common cold, than the common flu. Yes, it's a real biological man-made weapon who has the Jesuits' handprints all over it. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was made by, the, uh, by some company in England, but yet has an American patent on it. I have the patent for COVID-19 here on my channel and the uh, links at the, on the about page, check it out, okay? COVID-19 is a man-made biological weapon, okay? And the recovery rate is like what, 95, 98%? This is all manipulation and control. That's all it is, okay? But turn in your King James scriptures to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, 
Chapter 1. <clears throat> Exodus Chapter 1. We will be reading from verses 7 on to verse 22. Close out the chapter. Go there, in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Go there. Follow me along. Okay? Let's go. We begin. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt which knew not Joseph. Now, time out. Hold up. Instruction in righteousness when it comes to the book of Exodus until the giving of the Ten Commandments. Okay? For our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh is a type of Satan. Okay? Egypt is a type of the world. And of course, the Passover... Um, is very significant and also signifies the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, our Father, Jesus Christ, in many ways. Okay, you know, the blood post on the door, stuff like that, not a bone broken. Okay, they were taken out in haste. Okay, for our instruction in righteousness, we have to remember that. That Egypt is, for our instruction in righteousness, is a type of the world. And Pharaoh, especially this new Pharaoh, is a type of Satan. Keep that in mind as we're reading this, okay? Let's continue. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that, when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. And when you look into the history of the Roman Catholic Church and the Jesuits, um, they ruled over the uh, nations of Europe with rigor, with violence. And they set up maxims through the Jesuits and through um, their through kings and whatnot to destroy the lands that would not um, go along with their stuff would not go along with them. Yeah, let's continue. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Now, a little instruction in righteousness here in these times. You want to you wanna do anything outside your door? you got to conform. you got to follow these rules that make no sense, that are contrary to the scriptures. And don't worry, we're getting to Romans and First uh, Peter. Don't worry, we'll get there. Okay? We'll get there. Let's continue. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Sifra, and the name of the other Pua. And he said, When ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then, shall, then, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God, 
and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Okay? Who do you fear, Church of the Living God? Brothers and sisters of the body of Christ? Who do you fear? Our Jesuit government? Or the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father? And the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Who do you fear? Who do you fear? Let's continue. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have ye done this thing, and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because, <laughs> I love this, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Um, think about that. Oh, they, they, they're they already delivered by the time we get there. Kind of like what Rahab said to the people of her city when she hid the Jewish um, spies. It's like, ah, were there any Jews here by you? And she's like, well, well I, 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 don't, I don't know. And we, you saw what happened to Rahab. Her descendants today can be traced back here to the scriptures. Today, the descendants of Rahab and her house. Okay? Point is, And the midwives, verse 19 again, And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively, and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. Now, true, the Lord could have easily made it possible to where they just... But realistically, um... You kind of get the impression that the midwives were trying to pull one over on Pharaoh, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And, verse 20, Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass because the midwives feared God that he made them houses. He provided for them because they feared him. And this is... Uh, Another dispensation, not the one that we are in today, but obviously. Then Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So, tell me there, Church of the Living God, are those righteous commandments? Of course not. But see, there are those out there who will go to Romans chapter 13. Now, I'm going to cover this also in another video, another upcoming video on um, uh, the Catholic disloyalty teaching. The Jesuit Catholic disloyalty teaching is what it's going to be called. But we got to read this. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through... Seven. Okay, let's read. Romans 13, verses 1 through 7. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be, be are ordained of God. Now, with what we just looked at in the book of uh, Exodus, let's continue. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Oh boy. Oh boy. So see, you're supposed to obey the government, right? In all things. Especially when it runs contrary to the scriptures, right? 
And two, you got to remember about Pharaoh, uh, that God raised Pharaoh up to basically prove a point, to shew his power of how of uh, his signs and wonders unto the children of Israel. That's why the Lord raised up Pharaoh. But if you stop right at verse 2, so yeah, for the common good, you're supposed to wear the face mask, right? Even though it goes against common sense, scientific proof that it's more harmful than good. Okay? And did I mention, by the way, it's against the scriptures? Let's keep reading. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but it's a good work to wear a mask for the common good. Shut up. But to the evil. What Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. And a lot of our countrymen here in America, and even in your nation, I'm sure, have been conditioned to think that if you're not wearing a face mask, if you're not going along with the Jesuit maxims, you're evil. Because it's for the common good. And when you uh, look up anything of the coronavirus, the poison crown, it's, far, it's less dangerous than the common cold and flu. It's been made into a monolithic thing. Nonsense, brethren, sisters. You know this. But there are those of you out there who call yourselves Christians. Who have this warped mentality. Oh, I'll look at how pious and righteous I am as a Christian. Because I'm doing this for other people. Look at how good I am. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Why don't you go put your head, in, uh, your head in a bucket of cold water for a little while. Let's continue. Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For, for this cause, pay ye tribute also. Pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. Yes. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. And we might as well read verse 8. Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Now, very quickly about verses 6 and 7, go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 22, okay, under the law, Matthew chapter 22, ah, uh, Oh, beg your pardon, brother, and I got the wrong spot. Beg your pardon. Okay, sorry about that. Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 on to verse 22. Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 on to verse 22. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the, the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? 
Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. When they heard, had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. So, when you balance that off of Romans 13, verse 7 and 8, for this, uh, verse 6 and 7, for for this cause pay ye tribute, pray, eh, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So yes, we are supposed to pay our taxes. Had to mention that. But you see, what is being described here is submitting to righteous government for the punishment of evildoers. But see, the governments today are calling those who, who have brains in their head, who, wanna, who refuse these maxims, these stupid restrictions about the, the social distancing, they're saying you're evil. Because it's for the common good. It's for the common good, right? Right? It's for the common good. If you don't do it, we're going to snitch on you and get the police involved, right? Yeah, yeah. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. Verses 13 on to verse 25. I've had this one used against me before, too. We begin. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 25. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the King of Supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for praise of them that do well. Evildoers. Wait. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. What is a fool? The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Ignorance. Not knowing better. Let's continue. As free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it, if when ye be buffeted for your faults... Ye shall take it patiently. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For the common good, people are saying that you got to wear face masks and now add pretty soon spit shields, right? And you're evil if you don't do that because you're not concerned about your fellow person, spirit, soul, and body. Nonsense. It's a lie. If you really care about your fellow man, you wouldn't wear a mask. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And incidentally, I, I, uh, I have to mention this. YouTube itself made a video where it says, wear the mask. Have you seen it? Some of you, I'm sure, must have seen it. It's made by YouTube. Wear the mask. Our times here on YouTube are getting close to being over, brethren. I, I, <laughs> yeah, let's continue. <clears throat> For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, 
leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And see, the governments today are trying to tell you that they're righteous by forcing you, who aren't sick, to self-quarantine and to wear a face mask, protecting other people, not just yourself. And there are those Christians out there who take that and run with it and just pat themselves on the back. I've seen it. I've encountered it. It's disgusting. Let's continue. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were a sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. One more. One more. Okay? Go to... First Samuel now. Yeah, we're supposed to submit unto righteous government for the punishment of evildoers. You are not an evildoer if you utilize the brain that God gave you and don't fall for the Jesuit mind control and propaganda tactics about wearing a face mask and the face shield. That's nonsense. It's stupidity. Like I said, I have the coronavirus patent information on my channel. Look it up. And look at the statistics. Okay? Death tolls are being inflated. And the recovery rate is like, what, 95 or 98 percent? This is a joke. It's a joke, people. It's nothing but a joke. It's nothing but a joke. Okay? Go to 1 Samuel. I want to share this with you because this was something... Okay? 1 Samuel chapter 11. Not 2 Samuel, Brad. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 unto verse 11. We're going to see something of an other power trying to dictate something to another people. Like here in America, Jesuit Trump and the Jesuit order that rules our nation, an outside power trying to control us here in America, and you and other nations. Like in Australia and England, I'm sure. <laughs> The outside power of the Jesuits, Catholicism, the Vatican, dictating to your government. That's why we're looking at this. 1 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 11. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead, and all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us, and we will serve thee. Now remember, the Ammonite was the offspring, uh, excuse me, was the child of, they are the descendants of Lot. Of Lot, the um, relation that he had with his own daughter. The Ammonites and the Moabites are of Lot from their incestual uh, relationship, you know, the father laying with his daughters, okay? It's important to note. And Nahash the Ammonite answered them, On this condition will I make a covenant with you, that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. And the masks. Wear the face mask. And somewhere, somewhere, when you're outside, if you're stupid enough, to fall for this, and I, I say that with uh, all the charity of the Church of the Living God, um, if you're stupid enough to fall for this, 
somewhere Jesuit is laughing because you took the bait. Let's continue. And the elders of Jabesh said unto him, Give us seven days respite, that we may send messengers unto all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to save us, we will come out to thee. Then came the messengers of Gebeah of Saul. Then came the messengers to Gebeah of Saul, and told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and wept. And behold, Saul came after the herd out of the field. And Saul said, What aileth the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God, capital S, came upon Saul when he heard those tidings, and his anger was kindled greatly. Got to remember that during this dispensation, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit was not a permanent resident. He could come and go, come and go. There was no eternal security within this dispensation. Deal with it. Let's continue. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout all the coast of Israel by the hands of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on the people, and they came out with one consent. So see, Saul came to rescue these people. Let's continue. And when he numbered them in Bezek, the children of Israel were 300,000, and the men of Judah 30,000. And they said unto the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, Tomorrow by that time the sun be hot, ye shall have help. And the messengers came and shewed it to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Therefore the men of Jabesh said, Tomorrow we will come out unto you, and ye shall do with us all that seemeth good unto you. And it was so on the morrow that Saul put the people in three companies, and they came into the midst of the host in the morning watch, and slew the Ammonites until the heat of the day. And it came to pass that they which remained were scattered, so that two of them were not left together. Outside power coming in, dictating to us what we can and cannot do with our bodies, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you're lost, you're not saved, you're not of the Church of the Living God, not part of the body of Christ, you need to get with the program, <laughs> so they say. One more. Can you handle this? 1 Kings, chapter 20. 1 Kings, chapter 20. 1 Kings, chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 8. First Kings, chapter 20, verses 1 on to verse 8. And Ben-Hadad the Siri, eh, and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Ben Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. And the Pope Jesuits, they claim temporal power, the two swords, spiritual and temporal power. According to the Jesuits, the Pope has the power to put you in the hell, and also the temporal. The Pope is the monarch, the dictator of the entire world. And you want any proof? Look at all the people that go over there and bow down to the Pope and kiss his feet. 
Huh? Let's continue. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. So Ahab at first, he was going along with it. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh ben Hadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold, and thy wives and thy children. Yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time, and they shall search thine house, and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Take it away. So ben Hadad wanted to strip the silver, the gold, the wives, and the children, and then all their possessions, everything, wasn't enough. Wasn't enough. Hello, McFly? Here in America and even in your nation? How much, uh, how much are they going to take from you? How much are they going to take before you realize this is a this is a joke, it's a sham. When are you going to realize it's the Jesuits and their quest for world domination, and they're that close? Let's continue. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives, and for my children, and for my silver, and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. And brethren, verse 8. Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Hearken not, nor consent. Fight the face mask. Fight these Jesuit maxims. Fight it with everything you got. The Lord will provide for you. Or, or do you have that mentality, like uh, my my sister, your sister, my sister Kim? We were talking about this the other day. It's like, well, I said to her, the Lord will provide all our need in Christ Jesus, and she's like, I know that the Lord will provide, but and I'm like, shh, shh. get the butt out of the way, get your butt out of the way. Brethren, in a month's span, I lost the house I was living in, and I lost my job. Okay? The Lord has provided for me, a sinner who is chief, the least of all saints. And I'm nobody. I'm nothing. And unto you. But don't you think he's he's going to provide for you too? Or do you have a big butt in there? Yeah. We also see in what we have looked at the use of a military power coming in trying to enforce all these things. Fight the good fight of faith, brethren. Fight the good fight of faith. We do not know when we're going to be caught up. It could happen just like that. It could. It could. Maybe not, but it could. What kind of testimony, what kind of witness are you going to leave behind?
as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this one. Um, just wanted to share this uh, that a brother gave me. Um, got another one I'm going to do today, maybe two today or three all day here today. I don't know. But um, like I said, got, got more videos coming. So thank you so much for watching. If you do, please remember to keep our, our brother Alexander Hartley in prayer, our brother Jeff Jones in prayer. Brother Matthew Mellinson, Emma, keep her in prayer too. Pray for the brethren, body of Christ, church of the living God. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.